Hey everyone, Steve Margia here with Class A Surfacing. Today I want to talk a little bit about draft function. I had a user, uh, probably a long time user of NX, uh, mention the, that uh, uh, he saw a tool that I used in one of my previous videos, and it was draft, and he was pretty uh, amazed at the power of it. Now, for anybody that's a long time user of NX, they remember the good old days, like myself, I've been on NX now for about 20 years, the, the good old days, depending on the draft function you were using, you had to go through quite a few steps in order to get to a specific shape, right? It was a bit tricky. You had to subdivide, then you have to draft from an edge, and then you had to draft the other side, and so on. So what they've gone and done is they've really improved the draft as of late. So first I'm going to go into face. So specify your vector. Draft method, my parting face. What is my parting face? I'm just going to pick this plane for now. And I'm sorry, stationary face, not my parting. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Stationary face, I'm going to pick this plane for now. This is going to act as my anchor. So everything is going to draft from that and all in one direction. So what are my faces? That's my face. I can pick this face if I want, this face, and so on. And you can see. It's, you know, here's the drafting line. Everything is drafting out or in based off of that stationary face. So it's being held fast at that face. Now, if I come in here and use a parting face, you'll notice that that parting face allows you to draft both sides or just one side, however you want. But the, the bottom, in this case, goes back to being truly vertical, what it was before you applied the draft. So this parting face is really nice because in the olden days you'd have to subdivide these faces and use those edges off of those subdivided faces. Now what you can do these days is you can use a surface. So in this case I currently have a plane as my parting element. If I deselect that and then now pick this surface, you'll notice that along that surface here you can see both the top and bottom are being drafted as they were before with the draft both sides. But now I'm running along the entire length of that surface. Okay. And again, the surface is similar to the trim body. You want to make sure the surface is bigger than the body that's being drafted. Otherwise it's going to fail. So in this case it is, so it works. So I can use a surface that's compound in curvature. So if I have to do something, let's say that's uh, um, on an IP or in, in interior uh, project or maybe you have a bezel that's on your headliner whatever it may be and you want to draft around that edge or that, that surface that uh, creates that edge you can do that now you can see I have a symmetric angle if you want that value is now tied if you toggle that say so that that's again with parting face the last one is stationary and parting and this is going to be a separate video um, you this is a very powerful tool what it can do and uh, I want to be able to do that uh, without some time constraints, but it's, uh, and I want to do it on a part that I'm actually showing you represented, like a cold headed part or a cast part, or something like that. That's more representative of how that tool is going to be used. That'll be in the future. So that's drafting with a face. Select OK. Let me go ahead and hide that. You can see all my elements are now wonderfully drafted. If I double click on draft, you'll notice that I also have draft from edge. And again, this is a tool that's been there all along. With this, you specify your vector. And again, this is how you used to do that parting element, right? You used to have to go in and, uh, let's see here, let me blank this out. You used to have to go in and subdivide all the faces and then draft off of the edge from that subdivided face. But that parting surface, that parting element now does that for you automatically. So great improvements, very powerful. So with this, I'm going to come in, whoops, I'm going to come in and specify my edges. Let me pick my edge here and pick this edge over here. And as you can see, it's drafting based off of that edge. If I were to deselect this edge and then pick the top edge, you'll notice in this case it's adding material. Okay. Now, something that the edge can do, which is really, really nice, I'm just going to make a new file. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and throw in, whoops, there we go. Go like that. And just hide that just because I can. So I'm going to go back into draft and I'm going to go over here to edge and I'm going to specify the edge that I want to draft from. I'm going to draft that edge. Now, again, when why would I need an edge draft? Well, one of the reasons is because you can come in here and do a variable draft. So I'm going to pick a point along, just selected my variable draft, pick a point in here on that edge. And then now I can specify the draft angle that I want. I can pick another point. Specify that draft angle. I can now drag these point locations to anywhere on that face. If I want to, I can add another point and put that right where I need. As many of these as you want. And again, you have the option of doing each point along the arc length or a percentage on that arc and then specifying that value. You get your list of points here. It's just like all the other uh, operators that allow you to do this type of a law. Uh, Edge Blend will do the same and so on. So uh, it just puts all of those points in the nice list for you. If I select OK, you'll notice when I pick on Draft, I have all of those points in the tree for me to go back and use. Now, another type of draft that we have, and again, it's always been in there, but a lot of people don't understand how it's used, so I'm going to talk about it is uh, with tangent face. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in an edge blend on this face. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw in another sketch here and draw that, extrude. Go. Actually, you know what? Let me shrink it just a bit. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna throw in a couple of uh, edge fillets on here and here. Yeah, yeah, too big, I get it. There we go. And then now I'm just gonna simply, because I can, unite those. So the problem is maybe you've designed a part and you have all of your uh, radii in and you need to go back and draft some of these walls and I've seen this happen countless times so with this draft function that I want to talk about next which is called tangent to face again specify your vector they all work the same what faces do I want to draft if I pick let's say this face you'll notice I get nothing I get this little action alert saying hey drag this over into the screen Cannot draft the face is selected because it's looking for something to be tangent to. And what is that? This face. You'll notice as soon as I pick that face, it's just like an isocline curve now. What it does is it finds the tangent surface based off of this direction to whatever angle you specify to that edge blend. And it allows you now to apply a draft. I can do the same thing if I pick this face. Whoops, let me specify my vector. Faces to draft, this face, and this face. You'll notice by just picking those faces, it just runs this face up. And it gives you that, I guess, theoretical to that angle. If I want to add these faces in, you'll notice that now the entire faces are being drafted in. If I were to remove this top face and this top face, I'm going to end up with the same problem as I had before. There's nothing there for it to be tangent to. So I have to have those faces in as tangents. So, and, I, and I've done this in the past where, you know, if I'm building several dog houses, let's say around a wheel arch, and I put all the dog houses in, then I can go back in there and just simply add in a draft based off of my, my die line to just draft them all at once. And I have my fillets in, I have everything already done to those things. So this quick this this is a very quick and easy tool that allows you to do that. Great, very powerful tool. Now, there's another draft function in here, parting the edge, and this used to be in another like I think it was called draft body in previous versions. And again, when I get to the more advanced draft types, I'll do a video with this one um, as long as, as well as with the uh, if I go into face as well as with the stationary parting face type draft they're very similar in what they do there are little differences 
But again, uh, they're very seldom used. Uh, I've used them uh, like on a cold headed part or a forged part where I'm doing some serious uh, stamping on something. But uh, those are really good tools. So as you can see, the draft function, they've really simplified it. They've added a lot of usability to it. They made it a lot easier. Uh, whereas in the past you had several more steps to get to what we're able to do now in just a couple of easy, quick and easy picks. So uh, for anybody out there that's designing to a parting line, again, think forgings, castings, injection molded parts and such, uh, blow, blow molded parts, then you have a very good way of designing to that parting line, um, creating a surface, drafting from it. And that's typically the best way to go about doing these things. I know um, I've used uh, very crazy compound shapes when uh, generating, especially like some castings and injection molded parts. Uh, you need to create a, a very drastic parting line. Um, like I said, if you have a, um, one of the most drastic parting lines I ever had was any uh, bumper crush towers where I had to go in there and use a, a, a scooped or scalloped shape from the front of the entire front of the vehicle and I needed that parting line to sit up against the actual bumper because there's a plastic part that's mounting to it. So that whole front bumper became the actual mounting face. And, the, you know, sometimes those bumpers really have a lot of contour on them. So um, great tools, really easy to use. The draft function now really, really been simplified. So um, if you have any questions regarding them, please feel free to ask. Uh, I'll be doing more examples of draft, as I said earlier. And please... If you like the video, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you.